ফাংশনাইপারক্রফিপারেড Uh, then adrenocortical insufficiency will occur and uh, in primary adrenal insufficiency the primary uh, uh, disorder is in the adrenal cortex so the secretion of the aldosterone and cortisol they will be decreased and what are the causes there may be the injury to the adrenal cortex or any autoimmune disease uh, which cause atrophy of the adrenal cortex or the tuberculosis um damage to the uh, adrenal glands or the invasion by the cancer uh secondary adrenal insufficiency it is more common than the addison's disease and in this case there will be impaired function of the pituitary gland uh, as we know that from the anterior pituitary gland acth is released so when there will be the impaired function of in the anterior pituitary then not sufficient uh, quantity of the acth is produced so coming to the diagram again if the primary uh, defect is in the adrenal cortex it will be primary adrenal insufficiency in this case the adrenocortical hormones will be decreased but if the primary uh, defect is in the uh, hypothalamus if the primary defect is in the anterior pituitary then it will be called as the secondary adrenal insufficiency which is more common okay uh, now what are the clinical features of um, addison's disease we know that uh, there will be decreased glucocorticoid there will be decreased mineralocorticoid and decreased androgens so uh, the very first effect of the decreased glucocorticoid is hypoglycemia uh, blood glucose level will be decreased and it is caused by the reduced gluconeogenic activity of the uh, cortisol we know that cortisol they are uh, involved in the metabolism of glucose uh, leading to the hyperglycemia so when glucocorticoids they are decreased it will lead to hypoglycemia and also the patient is more prone to deteriorating effects of stress uh, there will be poor response to stress and even mild respiratory infection can cause death okay now when they, there is decreased mineralocorticoid then what happens we all know that aldosterone it reabsorbs sodium and when there is no aldosterone sodium will not be reabsorbed sodium chloride excreted in the urine and uh, there will be ecf volume will be decreased and um, a condition when the sodium is less in the ecf the condition is called hyponatremia and hyperkalemia is caused because uh, of retention of potassium potassium is not secreted by the renal tubules but it is accumulating in the ecf so it will lead to hyperkalemia and same uh it uh, we have studied that aldosterone it cause secretion of uh, hydrogen ions through renal tubules and now when there is decreased aldosterone so hydrogen start accumulating in the ecf a condition leading to metabolic acidosis at the same time when uh, sodium chloride is lost in the urine there will be decreased ecf volume and decreased plasma volume which lead to decreased blood pressure that is hypotension so hypotension is due to decreased plasma volume and uh, okay as you can see in the diagram there is melanin pigmentation darkness of the skin so there will be uh, melanin pigmentation of the mucous membrane in the skin 
and what is the cause cause when there is decreased cortisol so there is no negative feedback i have told you that cortisol it gives um once the cortisol is released it gives negative feedback to acth but when there is decreased cortisol there will be no negative feedback inhibition to acth so large amount of acth is produced and when large amount of acth is produced also they it will be the production of more melanocyte stimulating hormone and both acth and msh they cause the production of melanin so the darkness of the skin or the pigmentation of the skin is due to the uh, melanin here it is a um, diagram showing the different um, symptoms of the addison disease we have the hypoglycemia due to decreased cortisol we have the postural hypotension is due to the decreased plasma volume and we have the uh, weakness and the weight loss uh, it's due to the we have the weakness and then there will be the uh, pigmentation of the skin and uh, changes in the distribution of body hair is due to the decreased adrenal androgens okay now what is the treatment uh, an untreated patient with total adrenal destruction it dies within few days because of weakness and shock so person can live for years if mineralocorticoids or glucocorticoids they are administered daily okay now what is adisonian crisis uh we know that uh, in case of stress gluco the concentration or the secretion of the glucocorticoids they are increased but if a person this is a case of a normal person that in normal human beings whenever there is any stress uh, the secretion of glucocorticoids they are increased but in a person with addison disease the output of glucocorticoids will not increase during stress so when different types of stress they come for example if any surgical operation so a person uh, is likely to have uh, a acute need for more glucocorticoids uh, a, a person is likely to have acute need for excessive glucocorticoids than normal so uh, uh, excessive or more than normal glucocorticoids must be given to prevent death so what is a dysonian crisis this is and this is a university question uh, the critical need for extra glucocorticoids and associated severe debility in times of stress it is called a dysonian crisis okay now this is a clinical scenario Uh, Susan is a 41 years old divorced mother of two teenagers. She has always been in excellent health. She recently saw her physician because of her symptoms including weight loss, extreme fatigue. Her skin was very tan even though she had not been in the sun. In her physician office Susan appeared very thin with sunken eyes and decreased skin turgor. When she was supine her BP was 90 by 60. and her pulse rate was 95 beats per minute when she was standing her bp 70 by 35 and pulse rate uh, 120 beats per minute the physician ordered the following lab test uh, sodium it is 126 normal is 140 milliequivalents per liter potassium is 5.7 milliequivalents per liter normal is 4.5 glucose fasting is 50 normal is 70 to 100 cortisol is decreased aldosterone is decreased and acth is increased so if you can see the whole scenario this is uh, this uh, sign and symptoms and the lab test that will show that uh, she is having uh, some disturbance of adrenocortical hormones that cortisol is decreased and aldosterone is decreased plus acth is increased so when the cortisol and aldosterone they are decreased and cortisol is decreased there will be no negative feedback to the acth so acth is increased so it will suggest the addison disease again sodium is 126 if there is decreased aldosterone sodium will not be reabsorbed 
potassium is 5.7 it will it indicate it is indicating hyper kalemia it means decreased aldosterone and fasting glucose is 50 so it uh, seems to be hypoglycemia which is due to decreased cortisol and she is having tanning of the skin um, she uh, appeared very thin and uh, she is having extreme fatigue weight loss Appeared very thin when sunken eyes and decreased skin turgor is due to the dehydration. As you know that in Edison's disease, uh, due to uh, decreased ECF volume, uh, blood volume is also decreased and also there will be the ECF dehydration. So skin turgidity will be decreased. And um, now let us see a few questions. Okay. Uh, the whole scenario is clear, I think, that uh, all the sign and symptoms, they, and especially the lab test, they are referring the case towards the Edison's disease. So, uh, similar questions, they uh, will come in your exams. How did adenocortical insufficiency cause Susan's decreased arterial pressure? So, how the arterial pressure is decreased? Uh, we have studied in detail in the previous lecture that when there is decreased aldosterone, so sodium uh, sodium will not be reabsorbed and sodium will lost in the urine along with the water. There will be decreased ECF volume and uh, when ECF volume is decreased, so it will lead to decreased plasma volume and decreased cardiac output and blood pressure. And also when there is decreased cortisol. So, um, I have told you that cortisol, uh, adequate amount of cortisol is required for the action of catecholamine. This was the permissive action of the cortisol. So when there is decreased cortisol, so there will be decreased permissive action of catecholamines and um, the vascular vasoconstriction, the, uh, that effect of catecholamine uh, will not occur and there will be decrease in total peripheral resistance and decrease in anterior pressure. And uh, what was the cause of uh, orthostatic hypertension that when uh, she was supine, then her BP was 90 by 60 and when he, she was standing, that is 70 by 30, 35. This was called as orthostatic hypertension. That is the drop in blood pressure when a person comes from supine to standing position. So this occurs because of hypovolemia, because the uh, blood, when the person stands, the blood pools in veins. So, there will be decreased cardiac output and decreased blood pressure. Why was her pulse rate increased? If you noticed, a pulse rate was first 95 beats per minute and then it is 120 beats per minute. So, when there is decreased blood pressure, there will be baroreceptor reflex and increased sympathetic outflow to heart and blood vessels if you call your circulation. So, uh, the, uh, when there is sympathetic outflow to the heart and the blood vessels will be increased, there will be increased heart rate. Okay. And why did the skin appear tan? Uh, I think uh, now you should know that uh, because of the increased ACTH. Uh, ACTH also and plus the increased secretion of melanocyte stimulating hormone, they will cause pigmentation of the skin and the skin appeared tan. So this was all for today. Thank you so much students.